Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? All right, good. Some of you are not showing video. Some of you are. Hi, this is Dr. Epstein, Jeff Epstein, and I'm here with Roxy. Hi, everyone. Roxy, this is her first Zoom webinar. We do it on most of the events that she's showing. There's another person waiting. You just go over there and you hit the link. And now he's able to. Okay. Um, yes, thanks, Tim. You, you said yes as well. Anyway, I'm Dr. Jeff Epstein. Uh, Roxy and I have worked together for probably more years than I can remember. She'll correct me. How many years? 17. 17. <laughs> so we've been together for 17 years. Roxy knows a lot about the whole process, um, taking care of patients, making sure they have a, a nice experience. Uh, my audio is cutting in and out, huh? Oh, that's terrible. How about you, Roxy? How about for Roxy? Hi, guys. Is it still coming in and out? It's better? So maybe it's this side. Maybe this side's better. All right. So I'm going to leave Roxy to do her webinar. I'm going to go and take a bike ride. Um, I wish you all a wonderful afternoon or evening, wherever you're calling, calling from. Um, Roxy knows everything she uh, you need to know. And if you, um, we have everyone muted. Um, however, we have around 15 people. So at some point you may want to mute everyone if you just want to talk or she'll just pick on people. There is a chat format and she'll, you basically at the bottom of your screen, you wave your mouse over it. If you're on an iPhone, you just, you just scroll to one side, uh, scroll to a screen where you get the opportunity to um, get chat and you can submit questions. I'm too far apparently uh, to speak, but that's why I'm gonna even more of a reason for me to leave this to Roxy. Good luck, Roxy. All right, thanks. Bye, everyone. Have a nice night, right? All right, everyone. So I hope everyone's doing well. Um, welcome to the webinar, what to expect the day of your procedure. I'm gonna go over um, some very general information. And um, then at the end, um, I'm open to any questions that you may have, okay? Um, as Dr. Epstein mentioned, I'm uh, currently a patient advisor. I have been with the practice for a long time and have worn um, many hats, but specifically in the last five to seven years, um, I've been dedicating all my time and efforts to making sure that all of our patients have, um, along with the rest of our team, uh, the best possible experience. So we're talking about the big day, the day that uh, the day of the procedure, but leading up to the procedure, um, your patient advisor sent you via email a procedure confirmation. And the procedure confirmation is basically a blueprint of your procedure. It's going to have vital information that we're going to include for you, and it's going to have some attachments. And it's basically going to point out um, the day of your procedure, um, what you're scheduled for, and the financial aspect of your procedure as well. Okay? We're going to uh, add some attachments to the email. So it's important that once you get the email that you try to open it up fairly soon because there's some vital information that you're gonna to need to review um, obviously prior to your procedure. Um, one of the attachments that we're gonna send you is a medical questionnaire. And the medical questionnaire is especially important for patients that we haven't met um, in person. A lot of our patients, um, come in to us from, you know, they fly in for their procedure from all over the country. We get a lot of international patients as well. So uh, the medical questionnaire is basically giving us a little, a little window of what your medical condition is, or if you have any, or if you don't. Um, we'd like to have this medical questionnaire returned to us a couple of days after you've received the procedure confirmation, simply because if there's anything that needs to be addressed, we want to be able to address it with ample time prior to your Okay. If you've been to the office and you had a live consultation, you're not going to get a medical questionnaire. So the medical questionnaire is for those patients that we haven't met in person. You're also going to get an FUE checklist that Andrea, which is on this chat, um, she's one of our nurse practitioners, put together. And it's a, it's a good checklist to basically summarize everything for you in the timelines. Um, we're also going to um, include operative instructions for your specific procedure with detailed uh, before 
uh, and post-operative instructions. So pre and post-operative instructions and the checklist. Um, to get ready for the procedure, you just basically have to follow some very uh, simple, um, some very simple do's and don'ts. And again, the checklist is going to walk you through that um, to let you know exactly um, what is expected and what needs to be done. Um, for those of you that are flying in for your procedure, we're going to include a hotel list. Um, we've got um, corporate discounted uh, rates with a lot of the hotels in our area. You're welcome to stay anywhere. If you want to stay in South Beach, if wherever you want, you know, you're obviously welcome to stay wherever. We prefer that you stay close to the office because we start the procedures early in the day. And um, we're in an area that's highly congested with traffic. Um, there's traffic in Miami at all times, um, but the area that we're in is, is an area of high traffic. So we, our, our preference is that you stay in one of the hotels that um, we're going to provide you in the list of hotels. And all of this information is gonna to come to you um, with the procedure confirmation email that your patient advisor has sent. Now, the day of the procedure, um, we typically start procedures real early in the morning. So if you're flying in for your procedure, we highly recommend that you come in the day or night before. Um, if you're going to come in early enough in the day and you want to schedule your face-to-face -face consultation with him that day, the day before your procedure, we can go ahead and do that. But if not, we're going to allot enough time the day of the procedure for you to actually meet with Dr. Epstein, get your consultation done, and then review what the goals of the procedure are, okay? So um, again, for the patients that are not local, we definitely recommend that you fly in the day or night before, okay? The day of the procedure comes, and this is the big day, the big day that you've been very much anticipated, and um, our team is, you know, obviously going to greet you and be very excited. And our goal for the, our entire team is to make sure that you have a very pleasant experience in our office. Okay, we want to make sure that that you're comfortable at all times. And obviously, our goal is to make sure that uh, you're comfortable and that we meet all of your needs. Okay, during that during the course of your procedure. Um, that day of the procedure, you can go ahead and have breakfast, okay? A lot of patients ask, can I eat? Yes, you can eat. Um, the only thing that we ask is that you don't um, drink any caffeine or any caffeinated drinks because we are going to um, provide you with some sedation. And if you drink caffeine, it's going to fight off the sedation, okay? So have a normal breakfast, not a heavy breakfast, but have a normal breakfast um, and then no, ca no caffeinated drinks. The day of the procedure, it's important that you come in with um, an open front shirt. And the reason for that is that after the procedure, we don't want to have to put anything over your head. Um, so open front shirt, um, anything that opens in the front will do, okay? Um, we want to make sure that we stress that you please show up on time for your procedure, okay? Um, these procedures are very long. They're very, very meticulous. There's a lot of little details that are involved. And when patients arrive late, it, it stresses the whole process out. And the goal, of, again, is to make sure that you have a very pleasant experience and that, um, you know, we're not going to rush through the procedure uh, because we're not going to compromise the results. So if you, if you do run late, you run the possibility of us canceling the procedure, and we hate to do that. We rarely have to do it, but we just have to emphasize that it's very important that if you're scheduled to be here at 7 a.m., that you're in the office at 7 a.m. sharp, okay? Um, the procedure is done with local anesthesia, and then we offer you some sedation. Um, there's a cocktail of Valium and Ambien that's offered. Most patients take both pills. Some patients say, I want to be relaxed, but I don't want to fall asleep. So obviously we customize it to, to your comfort level, but most patients take both. Um, if you take any sedation, um, you're not gonna be able to drive afterwards. So ideally we'd like for you to be dropped off. And then um, when we're almost done, we can coordinate if you're local for someone to pick you up um, or if you wanted to get a car service or Uber, any other form of transportation. Um, if you haven't met Dr. Epstein in consultation prior to the procedure, then the first thing we're going to do is um, 
obviously after the nurses have checked you in and they've done all the necessary paperwork and consents, Dr. Epstein's gonna meet with you and go over. Um, by this time, he's already evaluated your photos. He's giving you a recommendation. Um, but when, once he meets with you, then we're actually going to go over all of the points of the procedure to make sure that that is the best game plan for you. At that time, um, you can ask Dr. Epstein any questions. Um, if you have one particular area of concern that perhaps didn't come across at the consult or during a web cancel consultation, um, this is the time to go ahead and address it um, directly with, um, with Dr. Epstein. Um, once you're brought into the room, so this happens usually around 30 to 45 minutes after you arrive at the office, sometimes an hour, but once you actually get to the procedure room, by this time we've already given you the sedation, so the edge is already off. Um, our nurses are going to um, greet you and we're going to start the anesthesia process, okay? Um, most of the procedures that we're doing nowadays, 99.9% .9 of them are all being done with the FUE technique, which means there's um, no incisions, no stitches, faster healing. Um, so the process is started by us putting you on your belly and extracting all of the follicles um, that, uh, you know, from around the occipital side of your head. So all the, the sides and the back. Um, I see that we have some women on the chat. You know, for women, we can also do the FUE procedure or we can do the traditional strip procedure. Um, a lot of times we'll do a combination of both, a strip and the FUE. Um, you'll have just a fine line scar with some stitches that either can be removed 10 to 12 days later or we could use dissolvable stitches if they're not local. Um, so we do the anesthesia, then we start the extraction process. During this time, most of the patients fall asleep. Um, you're, you're belly down, you're nice and relaxed, and um, the team is working with Dr. Epstein to go ahead and extract these grafts. Um, once we extract uh, a few amount of grafts, then we go ahead and we put you on your back and um, we start transplanting. Most of these procedures take pretty much all day, depending on the amount of grafts that you're getting. Um, some patients have to come back, you know, a second day. Uh, but basically the, the point that I wanna uh, make to you now is that when we take out the grafts, we try to get them back into your body as soon as possible. We don't uh, transplant grafts that were taken out, let's say in the morning at eight o'clock in the morning, later on in the day. So we do some extractions and then we do some transplanting as well. Um, and then we go ahead and we break for lunch. When you come in in the morning and we check you in, they're gonna ask you um, if you have any special dietary needs. If you've got special dietary needs, we prefer that you tell your patient advisor beforehand um, so that we can go ahead and try to meet them. Um, but if not, um, we'll take when we register you and get the consents, we're going to go ahead and ask you what your lunch preference is. Um, if you've got a companion with you and you have um, uh, a family member or somebody that is, that's accompanying you to the procedure and they wanna meet you for lunch, we can go ahead and let them know not everybody has lunch at the same time. So if the patients are sleeping and they're comfortable and they're not hungry, we're just gonna you know, we're gonna go on cruise control and try to get as much as we can. But again, this procedure is tailored on your needs. So if you wanna have lunch earlier, then we'll stop before. So if someone wants to meet you for lunch uh, and join you for lunch, it'll be our pleasure to go ahead and coordinate that so they can go ahead and have lunch with you, okay? Um, once we do the transplanting and we put you on your back, um, at that time, if you want, you can continue to sleep or you could, we could get you an iPad and you can watch a movie, you can listen to music, um, you can chat with our staff, um, you can sing along with the staff. So um, it all depends on the, um, on the patient preference. Um, but if you wanna sleep, obviously we're gonna let you sleep and, um, and rest throughout um, the time of the procedure. So after lunch, um, we go back and we do the same thing again. We extract grafts and we transplant them. Now, during this process, we're also going to be providing you with uh, PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. Um, there was a time where Dr. Epstein was, um, he left it as an option for patients, but now he's, um, he's adding it to all the procedures. Um, it's included with your procedures. And basically, it's a win-win situation when you get it with the procedure. Most patients get it as a standalone to treat hair loss. 
but when you get it with the procedure, it's not only going to help with healing, but it's also going to help with um, strengthening your hair. So during the course of the day, usually in the morning, they take out a little bit of blood, like if we're going to do a blood test, and then they put it in the centrifuge, and then at some point, um, they're going to go ahead and do the PRP treatment, okay, throughout the procedure. Um, this is pretty much the course of the procedure, okay? Um, then when we get ready to discharge you, um, we're going to, obviously, if you need for us to coordinate your ride, um, once we're almost done within that 30 minute window to an hour window, we'll call your ride. And then we'll go ahead and um, go over the discharge instructions. Now these discharge instructions are the same instructions that we provided with you, that we provided to you at the time that we sent you the procedure confirmation. And um, basically what we do is we go over um, the medications. Um, we provide you with all of the medications that you need for the procedure. We give you an antibiotic. Um, some patients need, uh, especially the men, when we do some of the shaving, they need, um, for the FUE technique, they need a bacitracin, which is a antibiotic ointment that needs to be applied into the donor area. And then we provide you with some pain medication. Um, so this is all the, the process during, we tell you how you need to sleep for the next few days and we just go over everything with you. Um, if, you if you're a little out of it, you're always gonna have a copy to take home with you. And we're always a phone call or an email away. If you have any questions um, and you're not gonna come in the next day, which I'm gonna talk about the post-op, uh, appointment, but basically um, what we're going to do is we're going to provide you with just a summary of what to expect in the next couple of days. Now, getting back to the medications, um, we are going to offer you some optional medications. Um, these medications are a stronger pain medication, uh, Percocet uh, or Lortab, depending on whether you have any allergies or not. Uh, to it, and then also Ambien, which is a sleeping pill. Um, if you want to take these optional drugs, we have a pharmacy that will deliver the medications while you're getting your procedure. Um, if you're not going to use insurance, the, both medications are going to run about $40. And again, these are optional. It's a, it's a very strong pain medication and, and Ambien to help you sleep. If you decide that you want to take the prescription back home with you, so that you can get it filled back home and use your insurance, that's fine too. We'll give you the prescription or we'll call it in electronically. Okay. Um, we invite all of our patients to come back the day after the procedure for a post-op visit. And this post-op visit is primarily to um, check everything, see how you're doing, check all of the new graphs, um, and then do a hair wash for you. We'll show you the first hair wash appointment. Uh, so we'll show you how to take care of it during the next few days, which are uh, pretty critical or sensitive during the healing process. You don't have to come back the next day for the hair wash appointment. This is an optional appointment. If you decide that you wanna take a flight home the very next morning, that's fine. Um, you don't have to come in. We'll just go over all those instructions with you. And then we usually want you to skip a day and then you'll wash it on post-op day two. Okay. Um, but if you can come in, um, we really um, hope that you come back the next day so that we can go ahead and just take a look and see how everything is going. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to start opening the chat to see if anybody has um, any questions. Um, I see that uh, Andrea, our nurse practitioner, is on here, and she's basically telling me that, um, yeah, so basically the, the post-op appointment is to show you how you need to take care of, um, you know, the, the graphs for the first few days after the procedure. Um, if you have an incision, um, like again, typically for women, and you've got some stitches and you're out of town, Dr. Epson can coordinate um, one of his colleagues. He has colleagues throughout the entire country that can take out the stitches uh, for you. Or if you have a friend that's a nurse or even in an emergency care um, center, if you want to go in and have them remove the stitches, they can do that. But also, we also have the uh, availability to. Um, 
put dissolvable stitches, which do not need to be removed. They just take a little longer to dissolve, sometimes up to five weeks, but um, you don't have to, um, you don't have to have them removed, okay? So here's a question. How do you sleep after FUE hair transplant? Okay, that's a great question. Actually, I think I'm gonna unmute you guys. So if anybody wants to ask questions and um, can everybody hear me? Okay. So yeah. how do you sleep after an FUE transplant? Well, you have to sleep with your head elevated for the first few days after the procedure. So what we tell you is uh, just take a couple of pillows, prop them up, um, and, and that's how you sleep. Some patients uh, have a recliner chair at home and they want to use the recliner chair, that's fine, um, but it's not necessary. There was a time where we had patients go out and rent a recliner chair. If you don't have a recliner chair, just a bunch of, you know, two or three pillows propped up, uh, that should do the trick. And the reason why we want you to sleep with your head elevated is, is because if you sleep too much, too flat, this can actually bring on a little bit more swelling, which is one of the things that can happen after the procedure. Okay, so I'm getting another question. I didn't hear what you said regarding a person to home the next day. Okay, so yeah, the hair washing is important. And what I was saying is that um, if you're not able to come back the next day, so obviously if you're local, we definitely want you to come back. It doesn't have to be in the morning. It could be, you know, an afternoon appointment. But if you're flying home, um, preferably, we, we, our wish list is just for you to get a flight like at noon or early afternoon, and then we'll have you come in in the morning, and then we'll go ahead and we'll do the hair wash. This is not just doing a hair wash. We're also going to go through it with you and show you how we want you to take care of it. You know, for the first few days after the procedure, you can't stand under the shower pressure and let the direct pressure of the water hit the grass. So you can, you know, shower normally, but go in with like a cup or a bowl, <coughs> excuse me, and then gently pour the water over. You take the shampoo, you lather it up, and then you just introduce it into the grafted area, and then a cup or bowl, just gently pour the water over. Um, can SMP be done the next day after the transplant? Yes. If we're going to be doing the SMP, which for those of you that are not sure what an SMP is, that's not micropigmentation, which is small little tattoos um, that uh, give the illusion that there's hair. Uh, this is done for patients that um, have a depleted donor area and want to get some added coverage. So we use the procedure in conjunction with the SNP. Um, if, we're doing the, if we're doing the SNP in a different area that we didn't transplant, yes, it can be done the next day. And actually there's gonna be a webinar tomorrow where, <clears throat> excuse me, our nurse practitioner, Andrea, and Jose, which is our SMP expert, is going to be hosting. Okay. Um, <coughs> keeps coughing. Sorry, sorry about that. The person who's <laughs> talking keeps coughing. I wonder if she has coronavirus. No, no, no. I've got a scratchy throat. I've got a scratchy throat. <clears throat> I should have had some water with me for the, um, for the webinar. But anyway, um, the benefit or the difference between the stitch and the, um, okay, the stitch versus the SHA, um, I believe you're referring to grafting versus uh, surgical hairline advancement. Um, the benefit of the grafting is that we have more control of the design of the hairline. I think Dr. Epstein did a webinar um, on that yesterday and the, the video of the oh, webinar. Uh, Roxy, yes. Can can I just clarify? No, what I meant was the difference between the stitch type that's used. So I believe you mentioned that there's the option to use an invisible stitch right. or a regular stitch that has to right. be removed in seven okay. days. And I was just I gotcha. Curious. I yeah. gotcha. Thank so you. basically, for the surgical hairline advancement, the stitches that we use are not dissolvable, and those do, do need to be removed a week later. And um, that's where um, maybe contacting one of Dr. Epstein's colleagues would probably be the best option. So um, um, that's what we, that's, is that what you were referring to, Sarah? Yes, yeah. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Yeah. So and when we do, when we do stitching in the back, um, for whatever reason, if Dr. Epstein decides that he wants to do a small strip, those stitches can be dis uh, dissolvable ones or they can be regular ones. But when he does the surgical hairline advancement, he only uses stitches that need to be removed. Gotcha. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. 
So I've got someone asking, how long do you look funky after the procedure and can you wear a hat? That's a great question. All right, funky. Um, so I'm assuming funky means um, visible signs that something was done. Um, most of the healing is done within the first five to seven days. And um, during this time, you can definitely um, wear a hat uh, to cover up. Um, the hat is not harmful as long as it's not a tight fitting hat. Um, also, uh, the day of the procedure, the day of the hair wash, so the post-op day, we're going to provide you some microfibers. And these microfibers, um, you sprinkle them on into the grafted area, and basically what it does is it, it covers up or it conceals um, some of the, the scabs. Um, if you're not going to come in for the hair wash the next day, make sure you ask your discharge nurse to give you the microfibers. It's very useful for men and for women. Okay, let's take a look here. <clears throat> if you get an SHA, then for some reason have to press your read around up the hill and you have to pay full charges. Great question, Naomi. And the answer is no. Um, when you get a surgical hairline advancement, it just addresses the area in the center, and we really encourage patients to come back as soon as three months later to go ahead and get um, grafting done over the scar. And if there's also some frontal temporal recessions that need to be filled in and round out the hairline, that's when we do it. Um, when, we, when we have to do it in two stages, if we do the surgical hairline advancement, you need to come back and get the grafting done. Um, you pay uh, a special fee because we, we see this as a continuation of the first procedure. So you do not pay full fee. All right. <coughs> If there's any questions here that I missed. This is the hmm. I think we covered um, I think we covered all of the the questions. I see something else is coming in. Let's take a look here. Okay, so is a is a no shave FUE as good as a regular FUE? Okay, good. That's a good question. Um, basically, there's three ways of um, of doing an FUE. One of them is the shave technique, which is where we shave all around the back and sides, and we'll take care of that the day of the procedure. So your procedure fee is also going to include your haircut. Okay. Uh, patients a lot of times will ask us a couple of days before, um, how short should I cut my hair? And we basically tell them, don't worry about it. We're going to take care of it here. If you cut it too, too short, it could compromise um, the, result, the, the procedure, not the results, but how we do the procedure. So we prefer to just take care of the hair cutting here in the office. Um, the no shave, neither one of these techniques. So let me go over the, the three FUE options. So Shave is where we cut around all the around the back and side, so all of the donor area is shaved. We don't have to shave the top of your scalp. Partial shave is where we just shave the lower portion of the back of the of the scalp, so it'll look kind of like a fade. And a no shave, we do no shaving and we work through the existing hair. We work through the existing hair, obviously, it takes us a little longer. So sometimes these no shave procedures turn into a day and a half procedure. Um, the option that you choose to have your procedure is not going to affect the final outcome of the procedure. So this is just for you, um, how soon you want to get back into your normal routine without having anybody notice you had anything done. Obviously, if you've never shaved your head and all of a sudden you're going to shave your head for the procedure and you're going to walk around, you know, with a really short haircut for three weeks, so that's not an option for you, then um, what we do is we recommend the partial shave. So, uh, the partial shave, the no shave, or the full shave, um, there's no there's no difference in uh, in it doesn't affect the results. This is just for you and how we how we help you handle the post op process. Um, do patients who have an SHA have to come in the next day for hair wash instructions? No, you don't have to come in. Um, again, we always encourage you to come in, but you don't have to come in. And um, if you don't come in, um, we'll just go over all of the instructions with you before you leave the office. All right. 
So, any other questions? All right, so I think, let's see if more questions come in. Okay, one more. How long after an SHA can I fly home? Okay, so after a surgical hairline advancement, and again, this procedure is not only for women, um, men also get it. Dr. Epstein did a, pre a webinar on this um, last week, I believe. Um, you can fly home the next day. If you want to stay you know, in town for a few days after the procedure, you can. But if you want to go fly home the next day, you can. And when you leave the office, this is one procedure where you're actually going to have bandages. Uh, most patients take off the bandages, you know, later on that day when they're back at the hotel or at home, or if not, when they come in the next day, we remove them and then we go ahead and we wash um, their hair for them. All right, so I just want to make sure that I covered um, all of the questions. Andrea, can you think of anything that I left out? We're good? Okay. All right, so I think um, we're going to call it a wrap. I want to thank everyone for um, tuning in. And um, if you have any questions, again, all of these webinars are going to be uploaded, I believe, into YouTube. But um, myself, Dr. Epstein, our entire team, we're all here to help you. We want to make this um, experience a very positive one for you. Um, and everyone's saying, ah, so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we want to make this a very positive experience for you. And um, so whatever um, is, is in our control, we obviously want to be able to, to, to take care of for you. And again, we're just after the procedure. Again, the majority of our patients uh, fly home the very next day. And um, we're just a phone call or an email away. Okay? I want to wish everyone to stay well. Um, and um, hopefully, this too shall pass sooner rather than later. And we can resume some type of normalcy pretty soon. All right? Thank you, guys. Bye.